Some people come to the colloquium and don't even know what the propers and the ordinary right. are. That's part of the learning process. That's part of the learning process, and these are maybe some of the people who are intimidated. They think, oh, what is this great program? We're going to see all, sing all of this music. They look at the packet, which we put online ahead of time, um, which is quite a feat oh, to get that put together and put online. A formidable And they look files. at it and they think, okay, there's these, I don't even know what the ordinary and the propers are. There's a lot of Latin, but you know, they come from every level, you know, beginners all the way through professional musicians. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. and can begin at their level, at the colloquium. Sure. There are classes and tracks for each of them. <laughs> so 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 uh, how long is that, Sanctus? Two full long beats, yes, two and Esprit, everybody, on, on three, yeah? Let's start right there, 19. something for everybody and we have a great variety yeah. of repertory. Victoria, Palestrina, over the last few years, Jeff, as you know, we have explored that whole area. Yeah. Palestrina and Victoria and Lasso principally. Now we've uh, broken out of that a little bit this year. We had a mass by Haydn, right. something we had never done in 19 years of holding colloquiums or colloquia, right. a Haydn mass with orchestra. Uh, conducted by Horst Buchholz, and it was magnificent. I think a uh, most uh, stunning example for such a liturgy uh, um, that is still in my mind was 1988 or 89, so about 20 years ago, uh, um, at St. Peter's in Rome. And it was uh, um, a celebration with uh, the late uh, John Paul II. And the music for the liturgy was the propers of, I believe it was Peter and Paul, but I'm not sure exactly, it was one of those feasts. And then the ordinary of the mass was Mozart's coronation mass, sung by the Vienna Singverein uh, with the uh, Vienna Philharmonic under the direction of Herbert von Karajan. Right. There is a video of that, it was yeah. quite a stunning uh, celebration, very unusual when you hear the Gregorian chant and then it starts with this uh, grandeur of the Kyrie. There's something the like that at the mass this week. Isn't yes. It? Mm -hmm. and I think it's an example, it may not be exactly everybody's taste, uh, but uh, there is, we, have, we have to have a little room for that as well. Actually, he was a director of the Haydn Mass, and when I first heard him sing, he has an incredible voice himself, and he had ex and a great knowledge of each of the composers. When they when they first wrote their music, their historical background, what music they wrote, an excellent conductor. He was very helpful, and yet he brought the most out of everyone. Um, the Haydn Mass isn't, a, isn't an easy piece to sing. And he pulled it off in a few days, and he inspired everybody. And I was, I was really impressed by his patience and then his great knowledge of sacred music himself, his wonderful knowledge. You have to uh, really have a, a mindset uh, for that music. And you have to be, uh, I mean, if you don't like Mozart, you probably won't like his masses. Uh, Nobody, uh, everybody loves Mozart, yeah. come on. Not that, that is not, <laughs> not quite true, actually. I was not a, a great fan of Mozart when I was uh, 20 or 21 okay. years old. I loved much more the dramatic, uh, uh, romantic pieces, and then uh, I found Mozart a little later.
Usually the Sanctus ends with a rather jubilant uh, Hosanna in Exercis, and then uh, the Benedictus very often in this uh, uh, um, metaphysical tone. I mean, there's a adagio uh, espressivo. So, of course, that only makes sense because it was written to be performed after the consecration. So the separation of the uh, Benedictus and Sanctus uh, um, is, is something that the music simply demands. <laughs>